Sleepers podcast. The offseason rages on. Carter, and uh, may I say, you look great today, my friend. Oh, thank you, Greg. I appreciate that comment. Your sound panels look great today. I kept hearing them kind of like a wrinkle, like they were going to fall in the middle oh, for of real? the Coleman interview. But, but they did right it. Now. We're good right now. Uh, we, are, we are proud and happy to present a Coleman Hawkins interview that we just wrapped up. Uh, Carter, what were your expectations going into this episode with Coleman? Uh, to be honest with you, I didn't really have any, but like it was, if I, you know, I don't know, like it didn't exceed expectations because I didn't really have any, but like, I thought it was like great in depth, like insight and shit like that. And I just think he didn't hold back. So I appreciated it. He was candid. Uh, I, I think yeah. curious. you had zero expectations, but that's fine. <laughs> I had, Did you have expectations. Yeah, I mean, I, I expected uh, I expected it to be a good interview, and it was a good interview. I think it's funny that some of the quote-unquote villains of the Big Ten are some of our favorite players that we've got for interviews, like Brad Davison, friend of the podcast, Coleman Hawkins now, friend of the podcast. I don't think Coleman's as much of a villain as Brad Davison is, like, universally, but, like, I think both your fan base and my fan base would say, like, we don't like Coleman Hawkins, right? Like well it's 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 illinois like it's no one in the big general. 10 except for illinois i think there's teams in the big 10 that come together for their illinois hate and let, let's call coleman hawkins says what's on his mind he's the he unfortunately he's the tall light skin who has to take all the brute of all the hate from the fan base that's how it happens i did the same thing it happens yeah, you're very experienced with taking that hate. I've seen it firsthand. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, everyone. Hate. A whole college hates me. Yeah. Alma College whew, really hates me. Nobody this hates is. Nobody hates the Luke Goodies of the world. That's where I think right. everybody just hates the Colton a, Hawkins, which is you, you know? I weird. wouldn't podcast with a ginger, but you're right. Uh, in all seriousness, though, shout out Coleman. He reached out to us to come on the show. He did a great job. Uh, we had a whole list of things we were going to ask him. And I think we asked most of them, but we also like on the fly asked even better questions, like because he opened up in a way that allowed us to ask some real, really in-depth things about the state of the Illinois basketball program, where they're headed post Kofi Coburn, uh, what it's like playing for Brad Underwood and trying to showcase your skills while also be a role player on a team that was as talented the last couple of years. Like it was fascinating stuff. Uh, a lot deeper than I think we expected to get into. But again, that's that's shout out Coleman for sort of leading us there. So he's made a fan in me, again, a, as an enemy fan. Uh, but I'll be rooting for Coleman this year. And I do. Can we go to State Farm? I want to go to State Farm this year. That's the one place. Oh, 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 no, no. We're in there for sure. And Coleman Hawkins is moving forward as a friend of the pod and friend of sleepers. So if you, don't, if, you don't mess with Col- if you don't mess with Coleman Hawkins, then we don't mess with you moving forward. <laughs> We should go for a Michigan Illinois game, right? Like, if we were going to go for one of our teams' games, like it would be the Michigan Illinois rivalry, right? Well, I, if we go to Michigan State, we can count on a player not ducking, smoking, sitting out. When Michigan goes there, you know who knows. The one thing I was going to, but, but Kofi, but Kofi's not there anymore, so maybe Hunter won't want to play there. The one thing that I was going to ask him that we didn't get to is, uh, what did you think of Michigan State's offseason acquisitions this year? Would love to say, but not that. Didn't get there. Uh, we'll save that for next time. All right, without further ado, Sleepers and Coleman Hawkins. All right, we are super excited to have our first guest from the Illinois program in Sleepers history on an episode. That would be Coleman Hawkins. Coleman Awesome to have you on the show. Uh, And also, just for everybody at home, this is the first time an active player has reached out to us about coming on the show. So I'm pretty pumped about this. I'm excited you saw our stuff and somehow said, hey, can I come on an episode? Uh, It's great to have you here, man. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm all good. Just got done with a little workout this morning. So, yeah, I'm going to hop on this podcast and probably take a nap after this. So, yeah. Hey, I respect it. Uh, we we uh we recently have found ourselves talking about Illinois basketball a lot on our podcast, which has kind of led to you know uh, us being introduced to Illinois fans. Now, Greg is a Michigan 
basketball slash Michigan State fan. I don't know. It's complicated as hell for him. I can't really comment on it. I'll let him talk about that. I'm a Michigan State basketball guy, but uh, I, I realized that Illinois, y'all had a y'all had a nice fan base. But um, what, what's one word you would use to describe y'all fan base? Because it's crazy, but it's, it's in a good way to me. But I want to know what are your thoughts on the Illinois fan base? Uh, yeah, I'd probably say nuts. Our fans are kind of <laughs> like, and not in a not in a negative way. Um, they're always. I don't know how, like, I'm always getting some brought into something. But um, our fans are are crazy. They're really diehard fans. Um, that, like, the, I remember uh, coming on an official visit. Uh, as soon as I landed, somebody was like, you Coleman Hawkins? So they, they know all their stuff. Um, they're never wrong. Uh, I've seen some of the arguments, especially with Michigan fans. So, no, our fans are crazy, but I love it. So, yeah. <laughs> So I, I feel obligated to jump in here and at least uh, prep you for, for my side of this. So I am a Michigan basketball fan. I would say Carter and I are both just Big Ten fans in general, though. Like, we just love and live and breathe this sport, and that's why we do the show. Um, and I, so I went to Michigan State. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I weirdly root for both Michigan State and Michigan. But as I'm sure you can imagine, Coleman, both of those fan bases have had their run-ins with the Illinois program in the last few years. Mm -hmm. I like to think I can be pretty unbiased about this, though. Like, I think our big video that had a bunch of Illinois fans discover us was one where I just came out and said, we got to start calling Brad Underwood Daddy Brad, because right <laughs> now he, he owns Michigan. It is what it is. I'm not afraid to say it. We haven't beat you in, like, seven attempts, and I'm terrified of your coach. So – I guess one, have you heard of the Daddy Brad nickname? And uh, are you okay with me calling your coach Daddy Brad? Yeah, I, 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 I've heard it. Um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and let you uh, call Mr. Mr. Brad Underwood Daddy Brad. Uh, yeah, I don't mind. You, you're 100% spot on. I mean, they haven't, we haven't lost to them. You said almost like seven attempts. So, no, nah, but in, in reality of it, um, like Michigan fans, they're always tripping, but like I have like mad respect for Michigan and their, everything that they do. Michigan State as well. Everybody in the Big Ten, I have a whole bunch of respect for. But I think it's just always fun seeing like Michigan fans and Illinois fans go at it. But Daddy Brad, you you go ahead. You you got that. You got that. Uh, I'll say what Coleman wants to say. The, the, the name's unacceptable. We're not referring to the, the, we're not, you have a father. I met him. It ain't Brad Underwood. All right. Is the, the it, eventually great. You got to let it go. Well, yeah, we'll see. It's young. We're young into the nickname. Uh, and yeah, I think it, it's nice that I think there is a hatred there, but I think there is a, a bit of a mutual respect right now between the two. I don't think a good rivalry can operate if there's not a mutual respect between the two programs, even if both might act like they hate each other. But I think it's good for the conference. So it, it's good to hear you acknowledge that, Coleman. Uh, and hopefully Michigan fans might see this as well and be like, OK, at least he said some nice, positive things about us. But that leads me to this, though, because obviously we had this date set up to record with you for about a week now. And uh, I, I wake up this morning and I scroll into Twitter and the very first thing I see is you talking about a three P. Yeah. Okay? So we, that obviously that was the year, the COVID year, Michigan technically hung a banner, but you guys haven't seemed to let that one go. Uh, personally. Uh, I mean, freshman year, I didn't, I mean, I didn't play that much, but uh, freshman year when we had that team and we had the most wins in the big 10, um and uh i just felt like we won the big 10 in my humble opinion i think any way it should go um any team that wins the most amount of games in a in, in the conference should win it uh or at least have a share in it uh if a team doesn't play what what was it four four more games but no i was just i was just on twitter and i saw back to back or we're going for back to back but I, in reality i'm just thinking like honestly it's been three years in a row you know got the most wins um had the best record that one year but i mean it is what it is so yeah, yeah i mean you're not you're not crazy for saying it I, I think it's funny to me because if you flip it to another fan base like let's say michigan state michigan state fan if i had the most wins that year you wouldn't be able to tell me that we're not the best team in the big 10 that we didn't win it that's just 
that is kind of that that is what it is. Yeah, I, I agree 100 percent. I think anybody anybody's team could argue if they if they're in the same boat, they could argue. But yeah, I, I just feel like uh, it'll be three years in a row. We'll be the best team in the Big Ten. And that's just my humble opinion. So I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, it, I, I, you know, again, I think any of the top programs in the Big Ten should feel that way. That's what makes this conference so competitive and uh, a very fun one to watch. So I've uh, I've gone on record and said that I love the offseason that your team has had. Uh, obviously, you lose a guy like Kofi, who really ran through the league for the, the number of years he was in college. Uh, and, it, you know, Trent Frazier, very successful four year career. Um, there's there's openings there. Right. And the transfer portal allows for some guys to potentially come in and jump right in into those openings. And you guys add Terrence Shannon, you add Matthew Meyer from Baylor. Uh, you've got a really nice young core, including yourself. I would still sort of consider you a guy who now can be given a full, full big time starter type role and you get to see what you can really do. Um, I've gone on record and said that I think your wings are the best in the country. There's a lot of really good teams, but like, I think counting you, RJ Melendez, Matthew Meyer, Terrence Shannon, like I, I don't see a better team at the two through four position in the country. Am I crazy for saying that? No, I don't, I don't think you're crazy because um, people don't realize the different things we can do offensively and defensively. Uh, we can all switch. We all have a crazy amount of length. We're all athletic. Um, and the, 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 the amount of different things we can do offensively is just crazy. Um, we started our summer workouts and uh, we put in not even sets. It's just like three, three rules in our offense. And the amount of things that we've just got off of just us being there and us, the way we move the ball and the way we work together, it's just been crazy. So you're definitely not crazy for saying that um, because, like I said, the, the amount of athleticism, length, everything, versatility, everything, people are just, it's just positionless basketball. And that's what basketball is nowadays. So you're definitely not crazy for saying that. Okay. So to, to follow that one up, you know, Greg just threw you into the wing category there. You know, we speculated that you might even be playing some center next year. Brad's been saying some things and, you know, pressers saying that you got a little guard skills. What what position is Coleman Hawkins? Where, where, where are you at? Uh, traditionally, I would call myself a four. Um, but if we're being honest, uh, I see myself one through five. Like you said, uh, I mean, you guys, if we're being truly honest, you guys haven't seen – like anything near like what I can do. Um, I love to, I, you know, this year it was, uh, I started off the year uh, really well. Um, and then it got a little bit shaky. Um, just got off track a little bit, but towards the end of the year, it kind of came back to me. Uh, but I was kind of just in like that, you know, rebound, um, do, do little things, but like, and that, and that, that was, for the success of the team, but now like coming with the success and actually being here for three years and now being able to showcase because we now have a whole new team that I can really help and participate more in. And it's not really, it's not really kind of stagnant and kind of the same traditional offense we've seen for the past three years. Um, I think it's going to be a lot better with helping me showcase that I can play one through five. And even if you see me at the five, you will you might see me bringing the ball up and starting our offense or the offense playing through the five man and different types of things. So, like I said, it's just positionless basketball. And I think that's that's uh, that's the that's the new style of play nowadays. And I think it's just going to be help, helpful for our team. So wait, who, who's got wait? Hold on, though. Who's got better guard skills? You or Dane? Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with me. Dane's actually a really good ball handler. Uh, but I think I'm gonna go with me. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm. I'm gonna go with myself. Yeah, I just leave it. At that. <laughs> I uh, I actually on the spot. I want to throw out a, a little player comparison that I've always. Uh, you've reminded me of somebody, and it is a Michigan guy. I gotta warn you right now. Carter hasn't even I, heard this, so we'll we'll see what both of you think of this one. You remind yeah. me of DJ Wilson. DJ, DJ Wilson. yeah, Jack he, kid too. 
uh, yeah, a West Coast kid came over to the Big Ten. He uh, and I believe he ended up a lottery pick. He kind of showed some things, flashes as a freshman, then got the big role as a sophomore. I could see that being your sophomore, junior. I'm just throwing out there. Card, do you hate that one? Uh, I don't want to say my personal opinions about DJ Wilson as a basketball player right now, so we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> understood, understood. Um, so I, I want to run through, because we are a Big Ten show, clearly, and uh, we've been lucky to have some guests from uh, previous Big Ten uh, teams in, in the last couple of years. And we like to run through some rapid fire questions and just sort of take stock of where everybody feels about the other teams in the conference. So what, what would you say is the toughest big 10 arena to play? And you can't say Illinois. Um, <laughs> I'd say uh, Purdue for sure. Uh, I'd even play a lot at Purdue uh, just because of some, some things that I, not even that happened, but it was just, uh, I didn't play that much, but even just being in that building, I definitely say Purdue. It's just like a whole bunch of people wearing all black, just like doing the same hand signals, same claps, same gestures. They're right on top of you. Um, yeah, I definitely go with Purdue. It's so loud in there too. Dudes playing the electric guitar. I'm like, yo, what? The? <laughs> their their mascots just running around. Um, jumping on top of thing. I, yeah, I definitely go with Purdue. Um, and then if I had to go with the second choice, I'd probably say Rutgers. Uh, Rutgers, 9,000. Um, just everybody packed out. Um, hostile New Jersey crowd. Um, were you yeah. recruited by Rutgers? They were on your list at one point, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, Steve Peichel and uh, uh, Coach Hobbs, those are my guys. Uh, Ron Harper is my guy. Their whole team, I was cool with their whole team. I, I loved Rutgers when I went out there on my visit. So those, yeah, those are those are my guys out there. So, yeah. Carter loves Rutgers too. You're big guy. It'll, it'll, sort of it'll, like it'll for, yeah. Oh, it'll forever be, it'll forever be known as the rack. That's all I want to say. I'm yeah. Not, what do they call it now? Jersey Mike's Stadium or something? Yeah. No. It's the rack. It's got to be the rack. It's the rack. It'll always be the rack. All right. So you gave us the toughest the toughest place to play. Who's the toughest player to play against in the Big Ten? At least that's, let's 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 go just off last year. Who's the toughest player you had to play against? Last year, I'm not gonna say it was like me guarding him, but who gave us the most trouble? Probably Malachi Brandon. Um, um, <laughs> what do you have on us? Thirty five. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think thirty five on us. In my opinion, we should have uh, been blitzing his ball screen, getting the ball at his hands. Um, but I think we started a little too late uh, doing it. But when he got off, he got off. His game is smooth. I'm not gonna lie. And I wasn't even guarding him for real. I didn't. I didn't. I got. I got to guard him like two, two times. I was on Liddell, but I think he gave us the most problems, to be honest. But if we're going with somebody like who I truly think, probably Zach Eady, like do seven four. Strong as <laughs> his legs are huge, built like a tree trunk. No disrespect to him, but dude's beast. Like, there's no way. <laughs> yeah, it's not real. You watch it like this isn't even like regular basketball. This is just a cheat code. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I can totally see that. Zach, Carter knows how high I am on Zach Eady. When I start like six months ago, I was throwing out National Player of the Year propaganda for Zach Eady. If he could I mean, he's seven, he's seven four, and if he plays enough, I mean, if, if he tough, plays thirty minutes to a game, I don't know what his conditioning is like potentially. But like now that Jaden Ivey and Travion are gone, like if it's just feed that man the ball thirty five times a game in thirty minutes, he's gonna put up some stupid numbers by default. Um, I, I have a feeling I know the answer to this one. But give us a Big Ten player you would most like to dunk on. And not an Illinois teammate either. A lot of people take the easy way out and give us a teammate. We don't want that. <laughs> that I'd most like to dunk on? You probably who, have. Have you who, have you who, thrown down on anybody in a Big Ten game, like on their head, this whole thing? I I haven't. It's, it's honestly, like, hard to because the defense is so tough. But if I had to pick truly – I think I'm going to go with Paul McKay. <laughs> I'm going to go with Paul McKay because I can see him, like him like trying to take a charge or something or him just like – because he's always backing somebody down. Or, But 
I, I, I think I'm gonna go with Paul McCahey. No disrespect to Paul, but I think, <laughs> I think that's the first. Cause we asked this question to a couple of people. We were at Big Ten Media Day, and we had a couple of Big Ten players on here. And you know, you get the popular answers. Everybody wanted to dunk on Hunter. Everybody wanted to dunk on Edie. I think that's the first Paul McKay shout out. So, I you know, it. I'm all for it. I absolutely love it. Oh, my <laughs> God. That's good. Um, okay. So, I, I want to go back to just some more Illinois-based questions. Uh, I got to ask about the two freshmen. We You talked a little bit about Dane when Carter asked who's the better guard skills big that you guys have. But I think uh, everybody in my shoes, like as a, as a Michigan fan this year, when they look at the Illinois roster – they're terrified of the roster minus, okay, maybe there's some questions at point guard and questions at center just because it's unproven guys. I personally am pretty high on both Sky and Dane, uh, but I guess what, what from your perspective, like you've been around some very talented classes in your two years at Illinois, like what does this incoming freshman class look like this year? See, this is why I wanted to get on here because I'm going to stop you right there. People are so – Oh, point guard and center, point guard and center. It's positionless basketball. I I don't we don't need Sky to dribble up the ball, initiate our offense, pass it. We don't need that no more. We have plenty of guys who can do everything. So when people say, Oh man, well, they don't have a center. Yeah, we got two dudes who can who can catch it on the wing and shoot a three now. Like we don't need a oh, we, we, they don't have anyone who can get their backs to the basket. And then defensively, we don't have to be in our drop coverage. We can blitz ball screens. We can switch everything. We can throw so many different defenses at people. And people are so, oh, I, what are the hopes for Sky? I don't know if Sky can. Sky doesn't need to ball screen. He's a, he doesn't need to be Chris Paul. Right? Like He doesn't need to do that because we have so many different different pieces we can put in different places to make people successful so when people are saying stuff like oh i don't know i don't know this it's just so many it's just like a it's just like a big relief of because now we have so many different pieces and and like i said this is no disrespect to like the last year we had to we had to do certain things to be successful in the past two years but now it's just like a whole different ball game so we don't need people with oh sky at the one this guy at the two this we don't need that. People are going to be all over the place. You feel me? So, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that's one of the most interesting things about your team going into this year is because, like you said, it's no – it's not saying anything about the last year's team, but literally for three years, you know, Illinois basketball has had one of the most dominant, you know, figures in Kofi Coburn in college basketball and, you know, had the guard play like Io and had Trent at point guard and things like that. So it, it is going to be something new. And I think it does bring a new wrinkle. And it's interesting to hear you say that. And, hey, can we, you know, can like, 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 like Greg, I'm high on Sky just because I think, you know, I, I saw him before the injury, first of all. And like I've already stated on past podcasts, he's got a knee tattoo that says nothing happened. Like yeah. that means he's going to be all right. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, and I mean, the the old school swag. I've been talking like he dresses like he's in 2011 with the baggy t shirts. <laughs> I love it. Um, but I, so I want to go back to because I, I feel like we're all kind of dancing around it, not to super pinpoint it, but like in saying, like, okay, it's this breath of fresh air with this new roster. Like, what we're really saying is like, when you have Kofi Coburn, you have to play a certain way. And I, Kofi was dominant. To me, he was the best player in the Big Ten for a really long time. But like, I do think it's okay to like acknowledge maybe there's a, something nice about moving on from that era. It reminds me quite frankly of as a Michigan fan, like we, we play with Xavier Simpson at point guard for four years. He was a winning player. He won a ton of games. He was the starting point guard on a national runner up team, but he was limited in certain ways. You could do things because he couldn't shoot. He had to have the ball in his hands you had to move a guy like Jordan Poole off the ball just because it made no sense for Xavier Simpson to be off the ball. And I think Michigan saw a little bit of a, a breath of fresh air when a guy like Xavier graduated. So I, I don't want to ask the hard questions, but I also don't want to just like dance around it. Like what we're really saying here is like, okay, Kofi's gone. It opens up how we can play now. Right. Yes. And that, that like, yeah, like you said, but it's no disrespect to Kofi at all. People just have to realize when we're in, let's say, for instance, Ohio State game, Kofi gets fouled out or whatever. We we literally like we didn't. I mean, we 
in the summertime, we have like stuff called like, we call like quick three, quick two, quick one. Um, literally, we're just out there freestyling. Like we weren't doing the Trent dribbles up, hits me. I look high low for Kofi, swing through. And then it's just a whole bunch of movement around the perimeter until we get a high low pass. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? It's just like mm-hmm. freestyle basketball with structure. And that's what's important. That's, I mean, Warriors, you see Draymond get a catch and they're just moving. You said, pin down, slip. And a guy like Draymond just facilitating it. And that, that kind of stuff is unguardable. But there's definitely, um, like you said, I mean, Kofi's gone. He's super dominant. It got, it got us all those Big Ten wins. Um, but now it's just, it's just going to be different. And it, it, it can be beneficial for all of us. I agree with that. So you you mentioned all these new pieces and obviously you've been doing like summer workouts and things like that. Who who's the most underrated player you think on your team currently? Or who's 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 a guy that no one's really talking about? Um, well, yeah, I mean everybody talks about like Ty and RJ. Um, but I think I'm gonna go with Ty. Uh, I think Ty's gonna be able to guard multiple positions. Uh, I think Ty's is going to be a great cutter. Um, if I had to tell Ty one thing in order to be like truly successful in this league is probably just work on his jump shot. Um, I mean, uh, I it's hard to speak for myself. I didn't shoot the ball particularly well this year. But if, if he wants to actually really go out and make money, his jump shot needs to improve. But I think it's going to be Ty. Because uh, like I said, he's just going to be able to guard multiple positions. He's a great cutter. He can finish at the rim and he's he, uh, no one really knows, but he's actually a great facilitator coming off ball screens, making the right reads. So I think Ty is going to be a sleeper and it doesn't have to be just, I'm not just saying like this year he's a sleeper. Like it, he could have a long career here. You know, I think over time people are going to wake up and see like he's really good. We are. I'm, we are just, I'm disgusted. Ty Rogers is in East, East Lansing. Like this kills me every time we got to talk about him in Illinois. Like he was in our backyard, but it's, you know, it's whatever. Yeah. He, I feel like he has the proverbial like Spartan dog, quote unquote, like toughness to him. Don't too, quote, don't like, quote it. Don't quote it. It's I'm just saying, like Michigan state usually gets those guys when they're like from the area and they fit that type of ethos and the mental side of it. And I, that's why like, it's a great get for Illinois. Part of why I think you'll have the best wings in the country. Um, so I, I also think like with Ty, it, you can see kind of from his Team USA stuff on the most recent place he's been playing, like he just does the little things. Like he's a winning player. Even if he's not going out and getting like 15, like he's doing small things on the basketball court that are contributing to winning games. Um, so you guys have obviously had the Big Ten success, right? Like you've been the best program for the last three years, bar none, no question. Why has that not translated to March? Because that's the one thing like my fan base can still hold over your heads. Is it just that it's fluky? Like any random team can win any random one game? No. Um, if, if we're being real, um, I truly believe that it's because in Big Ten play, we get a, away with a lot of, um, like I said, the the – the traditional offense that we ran for three years, um, you know, people, t- people tag every, um, every team in the big tens tagging, you know, we come off the ball screen, we either have the roller or the shake behind for the three. Um, and that's big 10 play basically. Uh, and we were able to get away with that throughout the year. But once, we, once we see teams not doing those things and, uh, Seems doing different defenses and switching everything. I don't think we truly had like a real counter or a change in our offense. So I think when we play a team like Houston, who just can guard and do different things uh, with their guys, I think um, I think we always get popped in the mouth. Even preseason, we lost to Cincinnati, uh, Marquette. Like we get out the Big Ten, and um, it, it was something different. And teams had an answer for us we didn't have an answer for them but big 10 play we always have an answer for the team and uh, we've been playing the team every single year and we know exactly what they do every year uh, and then when we get out of it um it's just like the same thing for us but now 
got a whole new team. We got a whole new, whole new everything. Um, so it's going to be a lot harder for teams to do what they do when they're, and when it's not big 10 play and it's, you know, and so, yeah, so that's, that's my answer to it. It could be wrong, but that's, if, if you really paid attention, I think you could, uh, probably agree with me. So it's not a fluke. No, I, I, I mean, I think that's a fascinating answer and I appreciate your honesty on it. I, uh, the other thing I would just add is like, I mean, the look at the two teams you lost to in the two tournament runs, like those teams were underseated by like six lines. Like Loyola yeah. was 12th in the country, I think that year. And you caught them, I forget, it was it like the eight seed or something. Eight um, seed. Yeah. And then uh, Houston ends up, they were top three on Ken Palm and you catch them in the round of 32. So look, there's a lot of luck involved in tournament runs. That's what I would say. But uh, the on-court stuff is fascinating to hear from your perspective. So thank you for, for sharing that. Yes, sir. All right. So I, I just want to get this, you know, I, you, you said all these things, right. Um, and about Illinois, which y'all going to do next year. Now, on the other hand, you know, the Big Ten this year, people are kind of looking at the conference. Maybe it's a little down. A couple of players have left. Uh, Indiana's done some things as far as adding players, getting guys like TJD back. Um, you know, but a lot of people are calling y'all the kind of the clear favorites right now in the Big Ten. Um, obviously, y'all, you do see that, even though you might not, you might not want to admit that you see it, but you do see that kind of stuff. What are your guys' like expectations coming into this shit, uh, into this season? Um, honestly. Uh, I haven't really been like paying attention to like our uh, expectations. I did see something saying like we were a sleeper for next year in the Big Ten. Um, but I think honestly, we just go about it uh, normally. Uh, nope, there's no pressure on us. I mean, Illinois kind of popped up out of nowhere since the last like 15 years. Uh, and we're back on top of the Big Ten. So I think there's, like, no pressure on us. Um, we have a young team uh, and a, a whole bunch of newcomers. So we're going to we're gonna be in for maybe it might be an iffy start. But I think, uh, like I said, there's no pressure on us. So I think um, in reality, we're kind of more focused on the tournament. Um, and I think us just playing well in the Big Ten will allow us to possibly win the Big Ten, but I think it will be more oriented towards the tournament and making it past that second round. I think that's really um, a big motivation for us, to be honest, because uh, if we're being real, I'm tired of people saying the the fluke and the round of 32 and stuff like that. So I think the focus on the tournament and, and I think the, the Big Ten wins will carry over, so. That's a scary sound for Big Ten fans. If Illinois <laughs> figures it out in March, nobody wants to see that other than your fan base. Uh, well, I think Carter and I are going to try and come out to an Illinois game this year. So uh, I, I've never been to State Farm. That's like the number one place in the Big Ten I'd like to get to. So we'll uh, hopefully we'll be able to catch one of your games in person. And uh, I'll, I'll leave you with this. So we last year, the last Big Ten player we interviewed was Keegan Murray, Iowa. And uh, he, he was very calm. He, he kind of did an interview the same way he looks on the court, like very reserved, very laid back. But look at him now. I mean, some people are saying, Coleman, like you come on the Sleepers podcast, you elevate your game and you end up a lottery pick and then you tear up summer league. So no pressure on you, but like we're kind of expecting you to really have a breakout year here, my man. Yeah, I hope so. Shoot, sounds good. Keegan Murray's really good though. So, but I, I yeah. I'm I'm excited for this year. I, I can't wait for next year to see what next year holds too. So we'll see what happens. Well, we'll be rooting for you, man. I appreciate you making the time and uh, make sure tell tell Daddy Brad I say hello for me. Would you do that, please? Stop, Jay, man. <laughs> Come on. I'm not saying it, but I'm. <laughs> you said so. That works. <laughs> that works. We appreciate you, bro. We'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Appreciate you, bro.